Welcome to Beating Cancer Daily. Beating stage four cancer for 30 years still takes my breath away every time I say it. I'm Saren, founder of the Comedy Cures Foundation, and I hope you'll join me for just a few minutes daily for the next 365 days so we may laugh, learn, maybe cry a little as we live our best days beating cancer daily together. I have to let you in on a behind the scenes secret. (laughs) (laughs) Missy Hall, comedian Missy Hall is here and you hear her laughing in the background because she knows what I'm going to (laughs) say. (laughs) <laughs> and the reason why she knows what I'm going to say is because we talk when we're not doing the podcast, like just in real life as friends. But because I like to talk to her on the podcast, I will say, wait, don't talk about that. Let's talk about it on the podcast. <laughs> and we'll probably talk about six things that I won't let her talk about because I want to talk about them on the podcast. And I want them to be really fresh and real and authentic and not just rehash when we talk about it on this Beating Cancer Daily podcast. So if you've never heard comedian Missy Hall on this podcast before, it's like a little mini podcast within the podcast because Missy was diagnosed a few months ago with cancer and called me because she's a comedian that has performed for our patients and caregivers and healthcare workers through the Comedy Cures Foundation. And so she felt comfortable calling me because I'm also a stage four cancer survivor. And I offered to mentor and help her through cancer treatment as I do so many people, but especially the people who have worked and served just so generously through our charity. It's like an honor, right? To help. And so I had said to Missy, do you mind if we record our conversations? And she so generously said yes. And so If you haven't heard from episode one all the way till now, we're almost near 20 episodes with Missy out of the 365, then just definitely go back and listen to them. They're so fun and so interesting. But the fact that we have these conversations where we have two words and I'm like, no, wait, let's talk about it on the podcast. Wait, no, don't. So... (laughs) <laughs> it's so unnatural, but then it, it makes the podcast really interesting. And this just happened. I, I kid you not, this just happened. And I said to Missy, no, don't talk about the fact that there's cancer months because every month is a different cancer month. And then I was like, let's talk about cancer month on the podcast. And then as we were getting ready to turn on the record button, she happened to say to me that she had just seen a really fun dog video about, and I was like, no, I get to talk about that on the podcast. Don't tell me anything about the dog video. (laughs) So it's just a little behind the scenes. that (laughs) This podcast has totally ruined our personal conversation (laughs) because we just are like, write that down. Don't talk about it. Write it down. Write it down. So she writes them down because I'm always driving when we talk. And then she sends me a memo of all the one words that I would let her get out into a conversation. Okay, Missy, I'm going to let you talk now. I just wanted to get that out because I find it so funny. It is. And I just was getting the giggles thinking, okay, like you and I did ever did a girl's weekend away. It would be just fraught with no don't say that. <laughs> no, don't say that. <laughs> no, it's don't so say true. That. We'd have to go to a silent retreat. Exactly. <laughs> go to Kropala, wear silent buttons, no talking buttons. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I got to tell you, this dog video was amazing. And I it was a little dog who's <laughs> out to get it water every time they go through a fast food restaurant and it can pull the straw out pull the lid off and drink the water. 
without spilling any of it. And I can't even do that. And My husband can't do that. Yeah. So. No. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> but it's funny because that actually leads into a little bit of talk about cancer months, believe I it or not. It because I really wanted to talk about it. Yeah. This, this is if you're listening to this new, then we are right around breast cancer month and or just coming out of breast cancer month, depending on where you're hearing it, or maybe you're hearing it six months from now. But the bottom line is it repeats every year. And this is your first breast cancer month as a survivor. And yeah. did that have any impact on you? Some people hate it. Some people love it. Where are you on that? I I vacillated between both. When it first started showing up and I it felt about me personally, which let's be clear, that's a, I don't mean to sound that. that it is self- Missy Hall breast cancer yes, month, everyone. Totally, Missy everyone, Hall, she's kidnapped I, breast cancer month. I realized that sounded very me oriented, but it was the first time I was under that umbrella. And I quickly got very sad. I quickly got sad because everything on my social media feeds, all the advertisements and everything were about breast cancer or merch supporting breast cancer research, everything. And it started to make me cry. It's overwhelming, actually. For better or for worse, it's overwhelming. Yes, it is overwhelming. And I would see products advertised and you'd see a comment like, I bet none of these profits go to help patients. And it just felt so emotionally charged. And I didn't want to cry because of a pair of pink sneakers. Like it just really started to feel very big. No, there was a total backlash about the whole pink ribbon thing. Yes. There's a whole politicized side to the pink and the breast cancer month. And there's been a lot of accusations and that it wasn't originally the organization. It was some woman who started it, but then it got attributed to this organization and that it's been commercialized. So there's a lot of politics around Breast Cancer Month and the pink ribbon. So it's interesting because some people really hate it and they're very vocal about it. So I was just wondering as somebody that's new into it, how you felt about it, because I've been in the pink ribbon breast cancer October month, like world for 24 years since I'm diagnosed and 30 years, if you count my misdiagnosis when I thought I had cancer, but they didn't see it for six years. So I I just am so fascinated now that it's been so hatched and it's so ingrained in our culture football players, baseball, everybody's involved. And thank God a lot of money is raised, right? So a lot of money is raised for cancer research and for some support programs. So I'm just curious how that made you feel. Do you identify with it? Do you want to wear pink ribbon? Have you stayed away from it? It's the funniest thing because when I first started seeing everything everywhere, it felt a little bit special. It felt special. And I do have a few things that are gifts from people that have the pink ribbon or have some pink and they mean the world to me. But then I hope those people are listening. I do. If you had said, I hate it. And I I, I feel so obligated to wear these things and care about the, but the fact that those few things have special meaning for you, I guess. Yes. They have absolute special meaning for me. And when I was first diagnosed and started journaling my doctor's appointments and journaling my feelings, I went to Staple and I bought myself 
a pack of pens that ha- they're pink and they have the breast cancer ribbon. And I will treasure those always because it was just, it felt like I was taking hold of something. And then as the month has gone on, I feel a little bit shying away from it. I not for others at all, but just for myself, it feels almost too new. I understand that it's so fresh. It's just so fresh for you. I noticed years ago, because I get asked to speak at so many survivor programs and I get asked to coordinate and put together so many programs because of founding the Comedy Cures Foundation and having all the relationships with all the comedians and then also as a keynote speaker and a stage four survivor. So I get asked anywhere from three to five years in advance for Breast Cancer Month to speak and collaborate and do programs. It has become so focal, like it's just such a main part of my calendar and also in June for Cancer Month, because if you're new to this, each cancer pretty much gets a month and they get a color of a ribbon. It's like the whole trend that happened after the pink being breast cancer month and the ribbon being assigned to it. So it it gets really insane for me in October and June, but because there's so many events and that's a good thing, right? It's a good thing that there's so much out there and supporting. They started booking me in September because they couldn't fit all the events in October. And so I started getting booked for breast cancer month events in September, and then a few spilling over into November. And I just thought that was amazing because it just means that they're really capitalizing on breaking down the isolation of breast cancer and of cancer in general. Same thing happens in June. The events start in May and then a few trickle into July and then the bulk of them are in June. But I was curious, did you go to any breast cancer events? I didn't because I've been talking so much about it and developing it on stage doing comedy about it. And I've been writing things that I hope to be able to put out into the world later. So I am thinking next year Mm -hmm. will be more, I can approach it more as a participant versus a, what's the word I'm looking for? More than a person who's just still stunned to be affected by cancer. Well, it's all so new. You are just so fresh out of it. But I was going to say, one of the most incredible feelings for me is going to a survivor event. And I have gone to one for 900 survivors. I've done, I've hosted walks for thousands of cancer survivors I did one at Shea Shea Stadium, is it, I think, in New York? Yeah, that's where the Mets play, Shea Stadium. I've done big events for survivors. And when everyone starts singing, I will survive, or dancing to I will survive, I get chills every time. And I know some people hate big live events or these kinds of events, and that's fine. I'm just saying... From my own experience, when I do these big events and I see the faces of all these survivors and everyone's cheering and dancing, it lights me up. And I know that some people, especially since COVID, do not feel comfortable even masked going to such a big event, but I get charged by them, actually. I truly believe that I will. And I think when I've had a full year of having 
gone through the diagnosis, gone through the treatment and getting over the shock that this has happened. Sure. That's where I will be because even now when I talk about it, even just telling jokes on stage and somebody will come by and squeeze my hand and be like, I'm a survivor. And I do immediately feel this hug and this just like warmth. I just think this year it feels a little big. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And you're processing, you're, I'm processing. you're processing. But mm-hmm. just for reference, Missy went on stage and did comedy four days after her surgery. I did. And, and that is insane. As a performer and a comedian, I am telling you, after having gone through breast surgery, that is not easy what you did. You just did not miss a beat and you hit the ground running. So to still be processing is so normal. I had a vision when you were speaking that in a year from now, I am going to have the honor of introducing you Mm -hmm. on a stage at a comedy cure survivorship program. And we're going to do that together. I just literally had that vision. We're going to manifest that. Oh, yeah, it's making me weepy. Um, yeah. Because I also am just now at the point in my journey of being able to think about next year mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. some clarity without thinking of cancer as a patient being the forefront, but cancer as a survivor and a steward for others. And I had spoken to you earlier that I just saw my surgeon. And when I told him I had performed, he kindly asked me, he's like, how's all the comedy going? And I told him that I had performed four days after surgery. And he asked me, it wasn't a little surgery. How did you do that? And I told him I didn't know what else to do. Mm -hmm. I didn't know not to do it. And I think it this time next year, when I have the opportunity to be more present for others during activities that are breast cancer focused with survivorship and stuff. I think it will feel amazing. Everybody just has to take this at their own pace and really decide, do they want to let this all go and have it be like it never happened? And we have that episode. I always reference it cancer drive by because that is just a real way that some people choose to do it. And then there are people who go right into patient advocacy. And then there are people who just privately help people. So it's just so personal and there's never a judgment in it. Everybody has to do what's right for them. I love the human connection and the vulnerability And the authenticity that I am blessed to get and receive and be part of every single day as being the head of the Comedy Cures Foundation and also being a patient advocate, it fuels me. It is what makes my boat rise every day. And I never get tired of it. I always feel it's such an honor and Doing this podcast, it's 365 new episodes. I just every day feel blessed that I get to do this for people and that I get to have some very special guests like you who drank the Kool-Aid of I want to come on and I want to be real and authentic and let the world see my pain, see my joy see my fear. It is not easy, Missy, getting back on stage four days after a surgery, but it's not easy coming on to the podcast and reliving every moment of it also. But at the same time, I see because you are so real with us that it's healing you at the same time. It absolutely is. And Again, I'm so grateful for that. And you and I have talked about faith before and... But not on a phone. 
We only not on a phone. No, we <laughs> we, do, we just say no. Don't talk about it now. Let's talk about faith on the podcast. So wait, Missy and I just did a call back, and so yeah, if you I haven't know. heard any of the prior episodes where we really delve into comic perspective, a callback is when you've established something funny or you've established a premise earlier in a conversation, and then you bring it back up again in a different way, or you repeat it. And the audience fills in all the blanks about what you have said about that. So it gets you more laughs, multiple laughs off a similar premise. And so we just did a call back on the fact that we don't allow each other to talk about things as we started the podcast, but also the fact that we've mentioned before about faith in yes. other episodes. Yes. And callbacks are the best and getting to do this. I believe that years ago when I was very first introduced to you and never knew that I would have cancer and then getting to come back and have the gift that you've given of letting me do this it's definitely part of my healing and i don't believe in accidents of that sort i think that's that's part of the plan and i'm very grateful for it i'm very grateful for it and i also think it's important for people to know that as hard as i laugh on a regular basis i also fall apart on a regular basis and i really want people to understand that the two can happen and coexist. And you're okay. And you're okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that's important, which is why I keep going from videos about dogs. That's what I do in my downtime. Whenever I get into my head about cancer or what I'm seeing advertised or anything like that, I literally Google funny dog videos on Instagram and watch them because that's it just- such a great point. It's such yeah. a great point. And that is a strategy that we teach at Comedy Cures that Missy just does through her own instinct and search mm-hmm. for comedy. But I scour videos all day long from when I wake up in the morning till when I go to bed at night not only because people send me amazingly funny things, but because I truly love to laugh, Mm -hmm. whether I'm with people or by myself. So that strategy that Missy's doing is a great strategy. And we talk about that on prior episodes. There's one at the very beginning where a pickup, there's one at the very beginning called Start Your Comedy Collection. And you amass these things that are funny so that when you need that laugh, you need to rebound. You have these on your phone or on your desktop, and you can quickly just watch something that's hilarious. Missy, it's such a great strategy. Oh, it's so helpful. It is so helpful because it brings your head out from wherever you don't want it to be. And I'm finding, especially on my phone, especially because your ads are trigger, your are targeted for you, for what you're looking at. So of course, right now, my feed is all cancer, all breast cancer all the time. So when I can scooch away from that and watch a dog taking a straw out of a cup, it just feels like the best thing. It feels like the best thing. I love that you so eloquently talked about being able to find the play and the comedy and the joy, and then also allowing yourself to have those moments of sadness or panic or fear that goes along with having a cancer diagnosis. What these comedy videos do, it builds your resiliency so that you can bounce back the way Missy's saying, but bounce back faster. That's what having that store of comedy does. It's like a muscle. It's like working out at a gym. You've heard me say it before. 
if you just allow yourself to really dive into the comic perspective and appreciate this gift of comedy, then you have it like a tool in a toolbox that you can just reach for and use. And that's what Missy's describing. Thank you for doing that, Missy. Absolutely. And sometimes you could have the tool in your toolbox of deep breathing, taking a walk, all of those things. But sometimes the fastest shift is a belly laugh because Mm -hmm. it covers all the same things that deep breathing and walking do for us. Great point. Really great point. I love that you came on to the podcast with a back scratcher. (laughs) Now, nobody could see that you had a back scratcher, but I was like, oh my gosh, I don't know what this is going to be about because we didn't talk about that. And I told Missy not to tell me like before, but I did see her carry a back, like a greenish back scratcher into the video. And I was like, don't tell me. I don't tell me. Just I, I, I just have to know why a grown woman who has beaten cancer is walking around her house with a back scratcher. Okay. As if cancer couldn't get any sexier. (laughs) (laughs) What I'm finding is that as my nerves and things are, I guess, coming back and repairing themselves after surgery, I have an itchy back all the time. And I found myself rubbing against walls like a bear and I would ask (laughs) my husband to scratch my back, but he'd always get almost the spot. So I ordered, I have an upstairs back scratcher, a downstairs back scratcher and one in my car. And I always have them for just that one area. (laughs) (laughs) And I, it becomes such a part of my habit. Like I'm, okay, I'm going to put on lip gloss, mascara, and make sure I have my back scratcher. And that's what <laughs> I am as a person. <laughs> <laughs> I knew there was a story. Yeah, A comedian doesn't appear with a back scratcher <laughs> if there isn't a story. So next thing, you've got to take that onto stage because that's funny. It's visually funny. It's real. What I'm going to say to you is you might also just have dry skin. I thought that. Yeah. But it's because I get, I do get dry skin in the winter and I get itchy, but there's that one section where it's like a deep internal different itch Mm -hmm. in the same spot. And I've been moisturizing it and putting aloe on it. So I just, I think it's some of the area coming back that had happened to me once I had a knee surgery and my knee itched like crazy for a while. So I've heard that in terms of healing also, that it's part of the healing process that you will feel that itchiness. I didn't know that it could be through nerves coming back nerve sensation, but I have heard people say that as they were here, I am actually scratching people. Yes. I don't know. I just got so itchy talking about being itchy. Everything is itching. I'm so sorry if we just made you itch. <laughs> I don't know. I just got so everything on my body started itching all of a sudden. It's true. And you think, and now I'm like, okay, my back. Um, but, and it's just the same spot right underneath where a bra strap would be. (laughs) (laughs) So silly, but I do, I, every time we talk, I'm like, Missy, turn that into a comedy bit. Missy, turn that into a comedy bit. Yes. And it's been fun writing them. I can't wait for you to see them as a performance. Yeah. As they start to really come together. I will tell you that. There are moments of keynotes that I do or comedy that I do where I interject the bit about being a cancer survivor. And then there are cancer shows where a majority of the material is really all about the cancer journey because 
that's what the audiences want to hear about to identify. And that's what the people producing the event have asked of me. So the way we say, oh, do you have a church show? Which yeah. means, or a synagogue show or a mosque show, that means it's very clean humor, very universal. And then what's your act? And depending on what kind of comedian you are, that act could be more blue, meaning it could have a little more risque or raw humor. And so now I can just tell Missy, you're going to have your cancer show. You're going to have your church show. You're going to have your stage show. You're going to have all these different shows that people can pick from. Yes. And I'm excited about that because right now it all exists together. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I love getting to separate them out. Okay. Do you want the cancer set? Do you want the church set? Do you want the PG-13 bachelorette party set? Which one do you want? And it's an, it's exciting as a comedy writer. And it's exciting as a performer to have those things. I've talked about some comedians before who I've helped through cancer treatment. And they went on to actually build the cancer show, quote unquote, and then make videos because they had so much material. They decided that they were actually going to do videos And I want to just shout them out because uh, if you're looking for that, you just really want to hear uh, an entire video about a cancer journey or part a good part of a video about cancer journey. You can look up Kyle Grooms. He did one on his brain cancer experience. And then I've also mentioned before John Ziegler. He went on and did a video He had very aggressive cancer and his likelihood of surviving was not great at the time. And so he realized he'd never done a video and he did not want to pass away without having left a video. And so he did a regular video that he shot at Governor's in Long Island and he injected into that video 20 minutes on his cancer experience. So that's also available on YouTube. And I just find it really inspiring that both of them wanted to make, and there are many others, but those are two. Tig Notaro did one. There are many comedians that then go on to make these videos, Robert Schimmel. And so I know that you're going to end up making a video and it's going to be either all about this or partly about this. And I can just see it manifesting. No pressure. I'm just (laughs) telling you, I do see it in your future. Yeah. And I love that. I love that because those are things that become part of your legacy. Mm -hmm. And again, just as the, and this dog that I was watching will never know how much he cheered me up. (laughs) 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 He's just happily drinking his water out of his person's cup. But, and the same goes for a lot of the things that I'll be able to put out into the world as I don't know, but someday somebody's going to be able to laugh at that. Exactly. And they are on stage already. And honestly, the feedback they're getting on this podcast is that you are helping so many people by being in dialogue on Beating Cancer Daily. And I just love you and that I look so forward to these conversations. And she did listen to Beating Cancer Daily before I asked her to be a guest. She actually checked it out before and then became a regular listener and is now a regular reoccurring guest on Beating Cancer Daily. So all of it is so good. And I know you guys love Missy because you tell me all the time, but if you are listening for the first time, as I said, go back and check out prior episodes. They're really fun. And we do teach comic perspective and you do hear how one person with so much spirit and heart goes through this cancer journey. And if you'd love to learn more about Missy and her husband, who's also a comedian, you can check out their live date show on Facebook on Tuesday nights. 
Mm-hmm. And if you can't find Missy Hall on social media, just write to the Comedy Cures Foundation. You can go to the podcast section, hit the record button, or you can go to the menu and hit the contact button. And you can ask us for Missy's signature so you can stalk her on social media, see where her shows are. And it's just so exciting, Missy, when I have people say, how can I go see Missy in a live show? I love her on the podcast. I want to see her live. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. And it's just such a joy to get to do this and to get to laugh with you and I get to get weepy with you. And I really hope that if you're listening, you get to smile and giggle a little bit. Will you send me the link to the dog video? Because I know people are going to write in and say, can I have the dog video link? So I'll be prepared already that (laughs) I want to watch it, but I'll also be prepared to send it forward. He just looks so serious. Like he's just... (laughs) She's laughing so hard. So oh, yeah. I know it's got to be a good one. Well, I, that's Yeah, I'm sorry. And that's the funny thing is there's other videos that are funnier, but just how serious this little guy looks getting his drink over and over. I hope it wipes you out the way that it wipes me out. <laughs> I will send it. <laughs> this is how we keep ourselves strong. This is how we fortify ourselves for keeping our comic perspective high. And I'm just so glad that we got to share this with you. Videos online can be so recharging. So I hope you find some and that you send me the link at comedycures.org. Just go to our website, hit the contact button, forward me your funny links. I will share them with Missy and we do repost them on social media and you can help pay forward all that laughter. Have a blessed day and I'll see you tomorrow. If you've enjoyed this podcast, then I'd love to ask for you to go to comedycures.org and check out our membership circle levels. You will find even more resources and more programming like our live virtual Q&A sessions with me, our live Comedy Cures events with our very talented comedians, live health builder workshops with Jackie Bryan hosted by me, a robust monthly newsletter, plus much more. It's really an exciting community. So please consider becoming a member, giving it as a gift, telling your friends, telling your hospital support group all about this community. I can't think of a more empowering way to go through a cancer journey or your survivorship or your caregiving experience than with us at Beating Cancer Daily. It's truly an honor to serve you. Thanks so much. See you tomorrow. Guess what time it is? It's time for me to read the disclaimer. Beating Cancer Daily and the Membership Circle are not in lieu of medical advice or treatment. They are for entertainment purposes only. Please consult your healthcare team to review your best strategy. Thanks for listening.